good God. He's a faithful God. He's a sovereign God. And uh, the Bible says that every good gift and every perfect gift cometh from above, from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness, neither shadow or turning, which means every good thing and every perfect thing in your life comes from God, and he does not change. Isn't that great? And so I'm thrilled, thrilled about that. Uh, we want to welcome those of you in that are listening through the Internet. We're glad that you've tuned in with us today and hope that the Word of God is a blessing to you also as you join in here with our services here at the Elmira Baptist Church. We're going to be in the book of 1 John this morning. So if you'll go ahead and open your Bibles up to 1 John, and uh, we'll uh, look at this passage of Scripture and uh, share with you a few thoughts that God uh, has given me this week. And I uh, uh, had a good week. I appreciate those of you who listened uh, while we were on the radio the other night, and, and uh, thank you for that. And uh, uh, thank God for that radio station that, um, that preaches the Word of God 24 hours a day in every country of the world. It's an amazing thing, and what a great missionary outreach that is, and so thank you for that. Uh, let's look at 1 John chapter number 1, 1 John chapter number 1, and we're going to begin reading with verse number 1. We're going to read this whole chapter. There's only 10 verses. The Bible says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it. And bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and, and heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to come to you in prayer today. Thank you for your word. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you take these simple thoughts that you've given me, Lord, this week for this congregation. And God, that you would feed them through it, grow closer to you, help us to find areas in our life where things are not where they need to be. So we might get ourselves closer to you, Lord, to be what you would have us be. God, I pray today for your blessings. I pray you'd open up the windows of heaven. I pray you'd open hearts and minds. Pray for that one nearest hell today. If they're lost, God, don't let them leave here lost. Let them be saved before they leave here. Lord, we ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for your reverence to the word of God. Now this morning in our text we've read, you may recognize uh, some portions of this text, uh, especially if you've been here with me. Uh, since I've been the pastor here, and maybe even before here, uh, I cannot speak to that, but I certainly know that since I've been here, one passage of Scripture that I quote very often is, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's a great, great verse in the Bible. I like what it means. If we confess our sins, it says He's faithful and just. That means He will do it every single time. I'm glad that we serve a God that will forgive our sins every single time. If we ask him to forgive us and cleanse us from uh, uh, all our uh, all our sins, he'll cleanse us from with from all our unrighteousness. And I'm thankful for that. And I would recommend to you uh, this morning uh, and, and this week as you go along to read the whole book of First John. It's a great book of the Bible. Uh, a lot of assurances that we can find in there. Some people question, how do I know I'm saved? Or different things. There's a lot of things in there that John puts in there. Uh, phrases like, we know we've passed from death into life. And you can read these things and, and see how your life lines up with them and get the assurances that you need. It's a great book of the Bible, and so I hope that you'll take this time uh, to read 1 John uh, during this week. But my attention today uh, is going to be on uh, one particular verse here that, that I thought about, and it's verse number 7. The Bible says that if, but if, we walk in the light. Now, what we have here in the Word of God is what we call a qualifying verse. And you say, what exactly does a qualifying verse mean? Well, 
what that means is that nothing else in this verse pertains to you unless you do the first part of what it says. And so the qualifier in this verse is if we walk in the light. Now there's some things promised if we walk in the light, fellowship one with another, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. But if you're not walking in the light, that stuff does not matter to you. And so as I was thinking about this verse, which is kicked off with the word if, there's several ifs in uh, uh, John, 1 John chapter number 1. Uh, you can read and, and find if we do this, if we do that, it tells us and there's qualified. And you say, uh, what, what is the purpose of this? Well, I find uh, a lot of things in Christianity are unobtainable, not because of God, but because we're not able to meet the qualifications. Let me rephrase that. Uh, uh, some of the things in the Christian life are unattainable, not because of God, but because we won't meet the qualification. Not that you can't, but we won't. We say we believe, but we don't. And so when I think about this, I, and I, I'm going to make another statement here. A lot of our failures as Christians today are because we say we believe, but we live like we don't. Right. We say we believe God, but we don't trust God to do anything. Uh, we don't let him come in and deliver. In all honesty, uh, some of you in this church and, and some in other churches right now expect the pastor of the church to live in a way that some of you would never live. Now, I'm not speaking of the qualifications of a pastor because those are exclusively for the pastor. What I'm speaking of is things that are, are qualifications for the Christian life. Read your Bible and pray every day. Uh, we're, we're supposed to walk and have a relationship with God. We're supposed to be faithful to God and to the church. These are not pastor qualifications. These are Christian qualifications. These are things that we all ought to be doing. And yes, I agree that the pastor certainly should pray and read his Bible, but I believe you ought to also. I believe you've got just as much of a responsibility to have a walk with God as your pastor has to have the responsibility to have a walk with God. These are qualifications. Now, I'm using the word qualifications here because we're talking about a qualifying verse today. We've got to meet the qualifications in order to obtain what follows thereafter. And so I am going to be preaching on this this morning, this qualifying statement, if we walk in the light. And that will be my title this morning, If We Walk in the Light. And I want to think about that this morning. The first thing I want to give you, and I've got three things that I'll share with you this morning, and then we'll be done. The first thing I want to give you is what I call the characteristics of light. The Bible says, if we walk in the light. Now, if you read your Bible, the Bible has a lot to say about light and darkness. As a matter of fact, John himself had a lot to say about light and darkness. And I'm not just talking about simply daylight and nighttime. I'm not just speaking about walking into a lighted room or a dark room. We're speaking on the spiritual plateau of light, which is godly, dark, which is satanic. We're speaking of uh, living that life, which is good spiritually and not the sinful life, which the Bible refers to as darkness. But I think by looking at characteristics in the metaphor the Bible gives us of light, that we can learn some things about what walking in the light is and what walking in the darkness is. Let me give you a few of those characteristics. The first thing that I find and I've got is this. Light creates visibility, right? Light creates visibility. Now, in essence, here's what I'm saying. Light helps you see. For any of you that attend this church here that do not like driving of the nighttime, could you attest to me that light gives you visibility. Yes, it does. Light helps us see. You cannot see as well in the dark. And light creates the ability to see what's going on around you. When we walk in this building, uh, this building is relatively dark. I would not say that this building is uh, exclusively dark because it has windows. And during the daylight, even with the lights off, there still is uh, uh, some manner of light shining through the windows. Uh, and, and so, uh, but when we turn the lights on, even with the natural light coming in from the windows, we turn these lights on, it helps us to see a whole lot better. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> light helps you to be able to see your surroundings. It helps you to be able to see what's going on around you. Let me put it this way. Light helps you to see any dangers that are coming from any direction 
because you're walking in the light. You understand it? Uh, that way you can see the danger and you can react to the danger because the light that's shining around you, the visibility light gives you can help you make wise choices about what you need to do based on your surroundings. Now you say, what exactly are you trying to say? If I'm walking along a path in the light and there's a hole in that path, I can make the choice to walk around that hole and dodge it all together, or I can make the very foolish choice to walk directly into the hole, which would not be a good choice at all. But light grants me the ability to do that. Darkness, on the other hand, creates blindness. You say, How, why do you say darkness creates blindness? I say that because the Bible says that. Notice with me in chapter uh, uh, chapter number 2, verse number 11. He that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, but that but because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Darkness creates blindness. Let me tell you something. If you're walking in the dark, you might as well be blind. Right. Honestly, that's just the way it is. When we live in the dark, we cannot see our surroundings. We fail to acknowledge danger that's around us. And so we find ourselves falling into the ditch. The Bible says over in Matthew chapter number 15, verse 14, uh, that he called the Pharisees blind leaders of the blind. He said that if a blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. And let me submit to you today, there's some of you that are living in darkness, you can't see the danger going on around you, and you keep falling into the same ditch, and some of you are leading others to fall in the same ditch with you. We've got to be very, very careful, because light creates visibility, and in the absence of light, there is no visibility. Let me also say this about light. Light creates revelation. Now you say, what does that mean? Well, the word revelation is it, it, it means reveal. The light reveals some things. And you say, well, that's the same as visibility. No, no. No, this is even more so. And, and I'll give you that. In Luke chapter number 15, verse number 8, there was a woman that lost a silver coin. And in order to find the silver coin, the Bible says she lit a candle and swept the house till she found that coin. She lit a candle and she began to sweep the house till she could find that coin. And, and I, here's what I want you to understand. The difference in visibility and revelation is seeing what cannot be seen in normal light. For example, my little girl may come to me with a splinter in her hand. She may come with that splinter in a lighted room. And she may say, there's a splinter in my hand. And I'll say, hey, I'll say, Vera, give me a flashlight or give me some light so that I can focus some light right down there on the hand so that I can see that particular splinter and remove it. I may not be able to see it if she says I've got a splinter in my hand with just the light that's available. So I need more light to be able to see what may be hidden. And so when we think about this splinter or we think about this extra light, this revelation, uh, we do that so we can shine it directly on things and remove what's causing the problem. See, we may turn the light on and begin to clean our house. But if we have more light in certain places, then we may see places that find things that we didn't know was there or see things we didn't know uh, was in there. And so uh, darkness causes subterfuge, or darkness causes concealment. In the dark, things are not revealed. In the dark, things can be hidden. You understand? We can hide things in the dark. Did you know that uh, it, 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 we may think something is clean until we put the right light on it? And then we realize, wait just a minute, that's not as clean as I thought it was. Over our house, we've got iron in our water. And we do all we can to battle the iron in our water the best way we can. And so uh, we use uh, uh, filters and we use certain cleaners and different things like that. And uh, at school every day, I wear white shirts. And so we may throw a shirt in the washing machine and we'll pull the shirt out and uh, everything looks good, it looks clean. But in certain lights, you can see where the rust has got on it. Yeah. Let me submit this to you. We may think our clothes match until we get in certain light and realize they don't. 
And you say, what is the difference? Well, the difference is incandescent bulbs, fluorescent bulbs, different things like that. One thing you got to understand, if you got an incandescent bulb in your bathroom at home, and you come to this well-lit church with floodlights on the stage, I'm going to be honest with you, your clothes look different on this stage than they did in your bathroom. And you may get here and say, hey, this tie don't exactly match, or these, uh, this ain't exactly uh, what's here. Because sometimes more light does that. In fluorescent lights, you can see things that are different than that. And, and so uh, what I'm saying is you may think your life lines up with where it needs to be until you get your life in the right light, and then you realize, hey, it's not as clean as I thought it was. Let me tell you something else about light. Light creates comfort. You say, what do you mean? Well, the ability to see in and of itself creates comfort. Imagine walking in the dark, even in your own house, a place you're very familiar with, a place you've been a hundred times, but you know how you walk in the dark? <laughs> yeah. Your, your steps are slow. Your arms are outreached. It's, it's even in your house because you know the door's there, but, but where's that knob? It's here somewhere. I know where, where is it? Where would you, you get in there and in, in the bathroom? There's a light switch somewhere on this wall. I, I look, where's, where's the light switch? That's how you grope around in the dark. Uh, it's, it, but if you turn the light on, you can see the knob, you can see the light switch, you can see everything you need to. There's a certain amount of comfort comes just from being able to see where you. Anybody ever got up in the middle of the night and stubbed your toe on something? Isn't that fun? <laughs> no, it's not fun at all. It's awful. It's awful. When in reality, if you'd have walked in that same room in the daylight, it may not have happened. I'm not going to say it's impossible to happen because we've all done it, but I will say this, it may not have happened. And so we've got to understand, one thing that I always do every night, and I've done it since my wife and I were married, I've always done this. Before I go to bed, when all the, before we turn all the lights out, I, walk, I, go through, I go through the hallways of the house, now go through up to our bedroom, and if there's anything that's impeding the way, anything that would be out in the hallway, I try to move it out of the way. In the event the house was to catch on fire and somebody needs to run out, you understand? We don't want to trip it over somebody that left the vacuum cleaner uh, out in the hallway or, or a broom laying out there. And so I try to do that, and I, I do this every single night. I go through and make sure that, that we can go through uh, un unimpeded. Uh, for my wife in our bedroom, when, when it comes, because she gets up in the middle of the night, sometimes, and let, let me tell you something that's real fun for my wife. She enjoys this. If I take my belt off and I just throw it in the floor and she gets up in the middle of the night and steps on the buckle, that, that's wonderful. Well, she just loves it. She says, will you do that for me every time? No, she hates that. So you know what I do? I try to make sure it's not laying there for her to step on. I try to make sure that she's not doing it. Because in the dark, we can't see. There's no comfort in the dark. Things come out. You know what darkness creates? Darkness creates fear. Yeah. Now, I'm not even saying you may be scared of the dark. But I'm saying darkness brings with it its own set of fear. And the longer you sit in the dark, the more fearful you become. I shared with you last week, we go to a place that's very, very dark, and you go in there like some of these caverns they got where they want to turn the lights off on you while you're in there, just so you can see how dark it is in the cave. And you stand there in the darkness and the stillness of the dark, and the lights are out. And it's silence, and you know what happens sometimes? You begin to imagine you hear things. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> You imagine that there's things in the dark. Thursday night, I went to the radio station. And uh, I was going out, I was getting ready to leave to go out to my car. It was dark. It was uh, after 9 o'clock when I left. And, and I was going out there, and the, the lady said, Hey, uh, before you go out there, I just need to warn you, there has been a bear out there. And uh, there's been a couple people see it, so be careful when you go to your car. I was like, Thank you. Thank you for that. You know. So I go out there, and I'm, you know, I'm, Bumping your head, yeah. I'm listening. I'm listening for the crunching of the leaves and different things uh, and, and everything because I, I don't want some bear to jump out and get me. And the good thing about a bear, and this is what I told her, I said, I don't have to outrun a bear. I just have to outrun you. <laughs> and, uh, and so if, if I can do that, then I'll be safe from the bear. But the bottom line is darkness creates fear. Do you know that sometimes you imagine stuff? You want me to tell you what happens to you when you're living in darkness? You begin to imagine stuff about your church, about your church people. Well, they're mad at me. They didn't talk to me today. Hmm. They, didn't, uh, they didn't greet me the way they normally greet. They just walked out and didn't say anything to me today. I wonder what they're so mad about. 
you begin to create in your mind these illusions of things because darkness creates fear, but light creates comfort. And some of you that are living in the dark, you need to understand that. And so we see some characteristics of light as this. Light creates visibility. Light creates uh, uh, revelation. Light creates comfort. Darkness creates the opposite. So the characteristics of light. Number two, here's what else I want you to know. God is light. Amen. God is light. Where would you get such a statement from that? Well, verse number five. This then is the message which you have heard of him and declared you unto you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. That's amazing because the Bible says in him there's no darkness at all. What does it mean when it says God is light? It means that there's nothing hidden about God. There's nothing hidden about God. I realize that there's going to come a day when we have perfected bodies, glorified bodies. When we get to heaven, we're going to know uh, things that we don't know now. And, and they steal some things about God that, that, that God has yet to see. I'm not talking about the things. I'm talking about everything you need to know about God has been revealed. Uh, the Bible says it knows what, how this chapter begins. That which was from the beginning, which we've heard, which we've seen with our eyes, which we've looked upon with our hands, and uh, looked upon and had, our hands have handled the word of life. For life was manifest, and we've seen it. We bear witness and show it unto you that eternal life. Notice what he's saying. He gives us some senses here. He said, we've heard it with our ears. We've seen it with our eyes. We've touched it with our hands. Did you know you have five senses, and it's the five senses that you determine whether something's real or not, whether something's visible or not. If you see it, if you hear it, if you touch it, two senses that are not mentioned there are the sense of smell and the sense of taste. Though other places in the Bible, the Bible does say taste and see that the Lord is good. What I'm saying is that when it comes to the criteria of how we know something's real and genuine and manifest and visible, we use our five senses. And this says God has used all five of them senses to prove himself to us. You say, well, that ain't enough for me. Well, let me share another verse with you out of Romans chapter number one. Romans chapter number 1, verse number 19 and 20. I want you to listen to what these verses say uh, about uh, God because these are important verses. And uh, sometimes people say, well, I just don't know enough about God or if God can prove himself to me or if God can show himself to me. Well, let me show you what Acts chapter number 1 or Romans chapter number 1 has to say about it in verse 19 and 20. The Bible says in verse number 19, it says, because that which may be known of God is manifest. Manifest means clearly seen. That which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him, God, from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. God has revealed himself to us because God is light. When I say, if we walk in the light, I'm asking, are you walking with God? Because God is light. Let me tell you what John had to say about Jesus. Jesus said in John chapter number one, verse number one, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, the same was in the beginning with God, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse number four, John chapter number one says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The word comprehend there means apprehend. It means that when the light shone, the darkness couldn't do nothing about it. And so when we read that, Jesus is the word. The word is life. Life brings light. You see, if we're going to walk in the light, we've got to get to the light the right way, right? Through Jesus, which is the word, which is the light, even eternal life, which is our light. So notice in what we read here, the Bible says that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And let me submit to you verse number six. If you say you have fellowship with God and walk in darkness, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. That's what John said. Now, can you tell me why so many people in our churches today are living in darkness but profess a walk with God? Did you know that it is impossible? You're staggering around in the darkness, and I know you are, because you keep falling in the same hole all over again. You're not in the light because the light reveals things. 
Things in our life are hidden. Things in our life are covered up because we don't want nobody to do it because we live in the dark. When the light comes on, the light shows us things. And so we've got to understand first, we see the characteristics of light. We see, secondly, that God is light. Yeah. And the third thing I want to tell you is this. Light is of God. Mm -hmm. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Light is of God. Now let me tell you something that we find in this passage of scripture right now. Under this thought, if we walk in the light, light is of God. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Now, uh, first thing under this, darkness breaks fellowship. Darkness will break fellowship. In the light, we can have fellowship with God and we can have fellowship one with another. In the dark, you cannot. You watch people when they start putting people at arm's length, start putting distance between them and the church people. I will submit to you, you're looking at somebody that is living in the dark. Because there is no fellowship in the dark. They don't want to be around God's people because God's people convict them with the way they live their life. They convict them with the way they talk. That's why some people now, when I uh, call them on the phone and say, boy, I'd like to see you come to church. Oh, I've been thinking about it and this, that, and other. Maybe I'll be there. Maybe I'll. Well, they don't want to be here because fellowship with God's people when you're living in the dark just don't work out because darkness breaks fellowship. Prove that to me a little bit more, preacher. Well, I will prove it to you a little bit more in chapter number 2, verse number 10 and 11. Notice what it says. The Bible says, uh, uh, He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. There's none occasion of stumbling in him, but he that hateth his brother is in darkness. That's a breaking of fellowship, isn't it? It says he abideth in darkness and, and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goes because he's in darkness because darkness has blinded his eyes. Let me tell you something. Uh, when they begin to get critical about church people, when they begin to run people down, let me tell you something, they're living in darkness. Let me give you another verse out of chapter number two that shows the breaking of fellowship. Verse number 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have no doubt continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of us. There's no fellowship between light and darkness. The Bible says what, what communion hath light with darkness? They cannot be two ideas that are together. You cannot have light and darkness in the same place. It is an impossibility. Darkness breaks fellowship. Darkness will always break fellowship. Let me tell you something else. Darkness binds filth. Now you say, what do you mean? The Bible says if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now here's what I mean by that. That cleanse means to purify. Cleanse means to make clean. Cleanse means to remove filth or to remove foulness uh, by the washing or the scouring or the rubbing or the scraping or the purging. You know what the darkness does? The darkness keeps you from getting yourself clean. The darkness keeps you, as we said already, in certain lights, you may think your clothes is clean until you get in another light and realize maybe it's not as clean as you thought. In certain lights, you may think that you're clean. But until you get in the right light, you don't realize how dirty you really are. The problem with some of you that are walking in darkness is simply this. You don't know how dirty you are. You don't know how filthy you are. And because you don't know how filthy you are, you stay dirty because there's no cleansing that takes place. I took a shower before church this morning. Thank God. Ain't you glad of that? Yeah. I got out of the shower. I'm getting ready for church. And I look, and I got dirt all over my hand from something. And I said, I just got out of the shower. How in the world? Now, see, in our, uh, at our house, we don't have no light in the shower. It's actually relatively... Uh, darker there where the shower is. Did you get out where the mirror is? We got very bright lights, and when you get there, and you're just like, where, where did that come from? And I had I had some dirt on my hand. And I'm thinking, how does that happen? How do you go through a shower? How do you scrub and all this stuff and still get out of the shower and have dirt on it? I didn't know where the dirt come from. I mean, it's, uh, it was uh, uh, it was 
very unusual. Maybe I got against something when I got out of the shower. I don't know what the bottom line is, but the truth is this, that darkness does not reveal all the filth, and when filth is not revealed, you won't get it clean. Because why would you clean it if you don't know it's dirty? But let me stop and go one step further. The Bible says if you walk in the darkness, the blood of Jesus Christ cannot cleanse you from your sins. He used the word cleanse. He did not use the word forgive. Because verse number 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. Amen. Did not say he wouldn't forgive you. He said he couldn't cleanse you. That means you come and you get forgiveness, but you still got the dirt on you. It means you're going to go back to the same old place again because you're not walking in the light, because you're not living where you need to live. And I want you to realize you can't see how dirty you really are because you live in the dark. Third thing I want to tell you about this, not only does darkness break fellowship and bind faith, darkness breeds falsehood. How do you know? He said, if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. Verse number eight, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Verse 10, if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word's not in us. Verse number six, if we say we have fellowship with him walking in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. It's an amazing thing that right here, you know what happens when you walk in the dark? It'll make you lie about who you really are. It'll make you lie about what you've really done. I want you to realize, why would we say we have not sinned? Because we're in the dark. Why would we say uh, uh, the things that we say? Because darkness breeds falsehood. Darkness causes us to lie. When somebody's lying about the sin they're in, it is because they live in the darkness and they do not walk in the light. Let me tell you something. You're never going to get from God what you need from God until you're willing to admit what you are to God. When God accosted Jacob, when he wrestled with the angel, and Jacob said, I'll not let go till you bless me, what did God say to him? What is your name? That's what God said. What's your name? Now you say, why would he ask his name? Because Jacob's name included a description of what Jacob was, the deceiver, the con man, the supplanter. And so when God said, what is your name? He said, I am Jacob. God said, you're right, you're Jacob. You are the deceiver, and you are the supplanter, and you are the con man, but you're no more Jacob. Now your Israel is a prince of power of God. Uh, you fought with God and prevailed. He's saying, listen, I'm telling you right now, uh, you're no longer what you are. That's what happens when you get in the light. What, what is your name? I am the crook. I am the common. I am the liar. I am the thief. I am the dover. I am the uh, alcoholic. I am the fornicator. I am the whoremonger. I am whatever God, I, whatever I am, that's what I am. I want you to know that I'm not going to lie about it because I can't get forgiveness and I can't get cleansed unless you know exactly what I am running around here in the dark trying to figure out why in the world we can't get back where we need to be with God because you won't come out of the dark. And as long as you stay in the dark, you say, I don't see nothing wrong. Yes, you don't see nothing wrong. You don't see nothing at all because you're blind. Because in the dark, you don't see nothing at all. And so you've got to understand, light reveals our dirtiness so we can get clean if we walk in the light. Four things here you get when you walk in the light. Fellowship's restored in the light. Did you know that? You can fellowship with your church members. You don't have to be ashamed to talk to them. You don't have to be ashamed to spend time with them. The, the unity in the church, he said, the thing which we've seen, we declare unto you that we may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Our fellowship one with another has got nothing to do with the similarities or the differences we have. The fellowship we have is because of our relationship with Jesus Christ. And when your relationship with Jesus Christ is not where it needs to be, neither is your fellowship. If we walk in the light, fellowship's restored. If we walk in the light, Forgiveness is restored. If we confess our sins, what does that mean? If we bring it to the light. If we say, God, 
This is it, every bit of it, every ounce of it. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If we say we have no sin, we are liars. We deceive ourselves. Forgiveness is restored. When we do. You know what else happens when you walk in the light? Faith is restored. Because then we believe if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. That he'll do it every time. We believe that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. You cannot walk in the light and have darkness in your home. You can't have walk in the light and have darkness on your radio when you leave church. You understand? I want to tell you something. The best music you can listen to is music that uplifts the name of God. You hear me? That's the very best thing you can listen to. And let me tell you something. Country music is not right next to gospel music. I mean, if you want to lose your dog in your house and your wife, listen to it. But you tell me how much a song singing about beer and all this stuff is drawing you closer to God. And how many stupid songs do we got to listen to before we realize they're stupid? If you don't drink, don't drive, do the watermelon crawl. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world is that? That <laughs> don't make any sense. Does it make sense to you? Don't make any sense to, I mean, we're listening to that stuff. We're like, yeah, woo you don't even know what the song's saying. I can tell you what Jesus loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so says. I can tell you what amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me says. Amen. you see we're trying to drag one foot in the light and one foot in the darkness because we don't want to give up all of it we don't want to lose our worldly friends we don't want to let me tell you something you know how long it's been since I mean somebody come to me and say have you ever heard the song so and so I don't know any song Today, unless it's gospel, I do not know any song. I do not know any current artist. I do not know anything about it. Let me tell you something. Music was a, a, a place for me that Satan could just keep dragging me back to where I was, and I didn't want to go back again. And as long as you keep looking at that and bringing up the old memories, it ain't no wonder you keep falling into the old sin. Because the truth of the matter is, I can listen to songs, there's certain songs, and I'm not even going to mention them because I know some people that's listening to me will know the songs, and it will take them back to the place again. But I don't want to be back in the honky-tonks. I don't want to be back in the pool halls. I don't want to be back in the clubs. I don't want to be anywhere in that place. I want to be where God wants me to be. God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. Right. If you've got darkness at all, you're not in God. Faith is restored. I can trust God. You say, preacher, I can trust God, but I just can't forgive myself. I just, I just can't forgive myself of, of, of what I've done and, and how I've done that and, and how I went about everything. And, and I, I just can't. Whoever said you had to forgive yourself? You going to go to heaven because you forgave yourself? Yeah. You going to have a walk with God because you forgave yourself? Listen, I don't even care if you forgive me because your forgiveness don't merit me nothing. God's forgiveness did. What difference does it make if you can forgive yourself or not? Who are you? You some kind of king or prince that has to have forgiveness of yourself? I, I want you to realize right now, uh, uh, our ability to forgive ourselves has nothing to do with, with whether or not we can have a relationship with God. We can have faith in God again. Quit putting faith in yourself. I think people right now that won't get right with God because they can't forgive themselves. Who cares? Who cares? We've all got things in our life, things that that bother us and things that uh, uh, cause us to be down. All the devil's doing is using your guilt, is using your guilt to keep you in the place where you are. Get in the light and put your faith in God and trust God. The Bible says if your heart condemn you, God is greater than your heart. You know what? If you can't forgive yourself, you know what God said? I don't care. I'm greater than your heart. Amen. And fourthly, faithfulness is restored. When you start walking in the light, you don't have to be begged to come to church. You don't have to be begged to serve God. You don't have to be begged to be where you need to be when it's time to be there. Because we're walking in the light. As long as we're in the light, we can see where we're going. As long as we're walking in the light, God is the light. If we walk in the light, here's the negative aspect. It's your choice. 
It don't say, I'm going to make you walk in the light. It says, if you, if you walk in the light, if you make that choice to walk in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. Then the blood of Jesus Christ forgives you of all sin. Then you can see the sin in your life and confess it and get it forgiven. But if you don't want to walk in the dark and you live in darkness, none of what I've said to you pertains to you at all. Because you've not met the qualification. I always hate in the Bible qualifications, qualifying statements. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways. It started with if, didn't it? Mm -hmm. If we don't do that, then neither will the healing of our land and the forgiveness of sin happen. If we walk in the light, which means there's something that's not going to walk in the light. I've pastored this church for 14 years. I'm going to tell you, I've seen enough darkness and enough people living in darkness. And some even live in darkness to this day because they've never got to a point to where they say, you know what? I've not looked at myself close enough to make sure that there ain't things wrong in me. It's amazing to me that we want to hold the candle up to our life and we want to shine halogen on somebody else. Oh, I'm pretty clean. Oh, look at you. You're filthy. You're dirty. You're... The Bible don't say if she walks in the light. It says if you do. And what we need today is some people that make the choice to walk in the light because darkness is destroying our world. Darkness is destroying the United States of America. And darkness is destroying our churches. Amen. Could I challenge you today to walk in the light? God is light, and in him is any dark, there is no darkness at all. I wonder if you'll look at your life today and find those dark places and get rid of them. There's some things we're going to have to do if we're going to have a walk with God. There's some things we're going to have to do if we're going to see God move. It's up to us to do it. It's not up to your preacher to do it. It's up for me as far as my relationship with God goes, but I can't do it for you. You're going to have to decide whether you believe what you say believe or if you're going to spend your life in darkness. Let's stand with our heads by eyes closed.